In 1919, he hit 29 home runs and was sold to the New York Yankees. A three-run home run for Buckington. The Yankees now lead it by a score of 3-2. to Bill Lee is now going over to a couple of the Yankees, and there they go again. Tech and A-Rod going at it. Roberts is going. Passat is throw. Roberts, safe. And what can I say? Just dip my hat and, and call the Yankees my daddy. Welcome to Fan Base, a deep dive into the greatest rivalry in sports, episode 83. Okay. <laughs> We're getting up there. I can't wait for the 100th show. we got to yeah. do something. What are we going to do? I don't know. we got to research that. Let's have a party. Figure, figure something out. Uh, listen, we, we are going into a, a series now where it's a three-game set. And of course, let's I, explain where we are for people that are looking okay, and so watching the video. We're at uh, the ballpark of the AA Hartford Yard Goats, the affiliate of the Colorado Rockies. In the conference room at Dunkin' Donuts Park. Yeah, we just did an interview in the press box with the team president. Correct. That will uh, that will air later at a, a pre. Different yeah, date. Probably a couple of days from this one. Yeah. We wanted this is like sort of like a, not, not to be Portnoy esque, but it's sort of an emergency one because we have our Yankees Red Sox series and we have to talk about it because the Red Sox season is once again on the precipice of disaster. Yeah, and if you're a Yankees fan, the last three games, well, the last like since, five games have been a disaster for the since Yankees. Since he was tough. Yeah, yeah. You know, I figured you'd have a nice. I, well, we talked about this before. So the Red Sox left New York and they were going to play the Rays, and the Yankees were going to play the Reds, and every, every, all the Yankee fans are like, oh, great, you know, we're going to beat up on the Reds, but you also lost to the Pirates before the, before the Red Sox series, right? right? So I was a little worried about that, and I figured you'd have your, you'd have your hands tough with the Rays, but I didn't think you'd get swept. <laughs> um, I'm sure you didn't either, but um, the Yankees aren't in a great position right now. They need a break. You know, Master Royce, our producer, <laughs> he said no one needs a break more than the Yankees right yeah, now. Yeah, they do need a rest. But here's the thing, the difference between this, this series and, and the four-game set from before with the Yankees, and I'll talk about the Red Sox in a second, is that you don't have Cutter Crawford. You don't have Brian Bayo. You have... Evaldi, Pavetta, and Sale. Like, Sale. it's basically close to what... That'll be Sale's second start back, right? Yep, and and it's Sale against Garrett Cole on Sunday. Ooh. So, and then you have in, in game one, Evaldi and, and J-Mo, Jordan Montgomery, and then Pavetta against uh, Tyon. So, it's it, my point is, is that it's more of an A-list matchup. Right. So, this is more... And the Red Sox have not only played poorly, they, they've actually played bad baseball. Like, errors and gaffes. Like stuff that you'd get mad at your children. I saw like about. The, the memes from who was it that uh, had the play in right field? Was it Chavez or Vasquez? I think Franchi. I don't know it's who it was against the Yankees. Where the you know he's like going like ah, yeah, yeah. where's the ball? Where's the ball? Right. There, there was like meme central on that. But you say you know bad defense and poor baseball. The same thing for the Yankees. Just well, come on, not, they're like forty games over five hundred. Yeah, it's the, not even it's apples and but, oranges. But it's but it's it's how you're playing ball. It's not what your record is. It's how you're playing, and it's how you're going to be playing going forward. And like they need a break because they're not playing good defensively. Judge needs a rest. He does. That's he, looks he looks tired. He looks tired. tired. Yep. Whatever the lower body soreness is, I mean, uh, that's got to be something, right? You know, his legs are probably tired, you know? But the worst they're going to do, the worst possible scenario, worst, is the Yankees going to the break with a 10-game lead. Right. I mean, that's the worst possible scenario, which is highly unlikely. And so— But it's still very comfortable. But as a Yankees fan, you know, we've been very spoiled this year, obviously, and, you know, we expect— them to keep winning and playing way above the ceiling, but listen, they they got they need a break and they they got to tighten it up. The defense is a little shaky and the pitching's been shaky. But you have a Red Sox team that is now the the Orioles are a game and a half behind them for the last wild card spot. So the Red Sox in 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 this the Mariners in, 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 out of nowhere. Yeah, I mean an incredible story. Both the Mariners and and Baltimore shows you. We talked about this last episode that. You know, as much as the beginning of the season is important to start strong, like if you can get smoking hot, you can reverse a lot of bad stuff in, in two weeks span, which is what both teams did. But my point is that the Red Sox in one four game set went from comfortably comfortable nothing's ever but pretty comfortable atop the wild card standings to possibly if they lose two or three here, they will be out. Right. Of the wild card. And I'm sorry, people people give me crap about saying, Oh, it's too early to look at that stuff. Not if you look at it every day. I look at it every day. That's all I look at is the wild card standings. So they're not going to catch the Yankees. And, and the fundamental thing I want to say to you and I want to say to people who listen is that what we learned between the, the Yankees could have swept the Red Sox. And some would say should have. Should have. And so technically they should have been swept by two of their rivals in the American League East 
consecutively. So I'm just here to say that the Red Sox honestly just aren't that good of a baseball team. And I guess I'll have to do what you hate, which is be happy if they make the wild card. <laughs> but that's true. Like, if you look at the team, they're just not that good. Right. Well, again, you have to be shooting for the wild card because all else says that you're not going to catch the Yankees. Um, but, again, you, you, you definitely are looking over your shoulder. Ever since the Angels in the Mariners brawl, the Mariners have been out of their minds, and they got one of the hottest young players in baseball, Julio Rodriguez, who's in the All-Star game, who's going to be in the home run derby, who you watch. I don't know if you know who Julio Rodriguez is, but the dude can ball. I haven't watched him much. So you what know? happened to that guy they called up last year that couldn't hit his weight? Uh, Jared Kelnick? Yeah. Yeah. What He's happened to him? Triple A, I believe. He's back down? Yeah, all the hot all the hot numbers. You know, Kyle Lewis, who won the Rookie of the Year, he's nowhere. nowhere. He's been injury prone. But, yeah, Julio Rodriguez, they say he's uh, uh, Luis Robert on crack. <laughs> 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 so the Duke can ball. It's going to be interesting to see him hit in the home run derby. He can definitely probably win the whole thing. He can hit some bombs. Well, I'm just happy that there are relevant people in it. And a mixture. So relevant, you have... Uh, and, re- and young names, like you just mentioned. So you have... Pujols is in it. That yep. should be interesting. Corey Seager's in it. Uh, Giancarlo's not in it. Uh, Acuna's in it. Yep. The and polar bear. And Alonzo. Pete. Yep. Pete. Pete's in it. But he. Soto. That's yeah, right. Yeah, Soto's in it too. Yeah. That's right. And but the bottom line is, that there's some household names and some young names that people need to get to know, like the guy you just talked about with Seattle. But back to the Yankees Red Sox series. Give me a quick prediction. All right. So last time was a four game series, and I said they would split. And you were right, and I was wrong. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, but it's the, the Yankees have been, should have probably, like you said, not split. They should have the at least thing, won three, so yeah. They shouldn't be happy with that. Um, Three-game series, I think, you know, I want to say that the Yankees would, would easily win this game, saying that the Red Sox have just lost four in a row, but I think the, Yan- the Red Sox want a little bit of uh, redemption coming off of getting swept, and I think they're going to put the screws to them tonight. You but really I still think, think so? But I still think the Yankees are going to take two out of three from them. But I don't think they'll win it tonight, which I can't believe I just said that because I can't stand the Red Sox and it drives me nuts. But I'm trying to think logically here. And then, you know, you're asking me to just pick. When are we going to teach you broadcasting? You know, we just might as well have this, no, have this intervention right now. Like people might listen to this in four days. You keep saying tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, stay generic All right, so that. the first no, game of the series. No, we're not going to even edit it because this is real. This is real life. So you think that the Red Sox will win Anybody game one and they'll lose? And the, the Yankees and Red Sox aren't playing, and if they think they're going to be playing tonight. But they, they might just like listening to us. I know people just like your voice, John. They, they like just, my voice? Yeah, they do. They just like John Seneca's voice. <laughs> they tune You're in You're becoming a Red me. Sox-Yankees sex symbol on YouTube with all five, five viewers. Um, no, in all seriousness – Somebody's got to win the series, so it's not like the four-game set. What do you think? I don't know what's – I'm not going to equivocate. I'll make an answer. I think the Red Sox have to sweep. And I don't, I don't say that they won't make the playoffs if they don't sweep. It's not that. Their season's still intact. If they, even if they get swept, they can still make the playoffs. I'm not that stupid. But I think that they need to go in – let me put it this way. If they don't sweep, they need to win Sunday. So, like, even if they drop the first two, they have to win Sunday. Like, the Red Sox have go to go in the, the break, break feeling better about themselves because the truth is they all know what we just said. They got lucky against the Yankees, and they got spanked by Tampa. And there's, right now they haven't shown a lot of heart. So I'm going to say – Tampa's gonna, really not that good of a team either. I'm going to say the Red Sox will win two out of three, and this is what's going to happen. They're going to win game one. Pavetta, he's puking on himself right now. I don't know what's wrong with him. And he's going to maybe get shelled in, in, in game two, and then Sale's going to pitch well in game three, and Garrett is going to get spanked again by Devers. Okay, so you say two out of three for the Sox. I say two out of three for the Yanks. You say they lose the first game. I say they win the first game. Who? I say the Red Sox are going to lose tonight. No, they're going to win. Ah, 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 I said tonight. They're going to win the game one. They're going to lose Pavetta's start, which is game two. And they're going to win game three with Sale against Garrett Cole, which will be a fun game to watch. So when it comes down to it, we don't want to lose on Sunday if you're the home— you're the one of us, right? Because exactly. you don't want to go into the break a loser. I don't. Yeah. I, I Nobody wanna, wants to be a loser. No one go wants to go into the break <laughs> a loser. And and listen, I I think the Yankees are going to be really poised if they if they can end on a good note. I hope ro- there's no vacation again. jellyfishes, man. Like I talked about last time, because weren't they, they the ones who had the the big thing on the boat? Was that wasn't the Yankees? No, it was the it? Giants. I oh, think yeah, the, 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 the New York. They all Giants. took the pic- yeah, That's what it was. <laughs> the New York Football Giants. New York Football Giants. They took that picture and they haven't won like yeah. three games the in a cr- row the since. The curse of that picture. <laughs> it's really it funny. Was like the Sports Illustrated cover <laughs> curse. <laughs> He's John Senecal. I'm Brian Shackman. I think that's it. I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're good. We're gonna hopefully talk again after this. We'll wrap series. it up. Yeah. So we'll we'll do this episode, sort of previewing the 
the, the full series. We'll get it out as quick as we can. We'll do a wrap up on Monday, Tuesday, probably Tuesday, and then we'll do the Tim Restall, the team president of the Harvard Yard Goats, who's got some just some what a great career. Started off selling fried dough at Canopy Lake Park in New Hampshire, <laughs> and now he's you know one of the best executives in professional sports, to be quite yeah, honest. Yeah, with a great ballpark, he has it basically as his playground. Yeah, really cool. This is episode 83 of Fanbase, a deep dive into the greatest rivalry in sports.